Now let's move on to one of the most exciting topics in Langchain, and that is agents. So far we looked at building chains, but agents are different in the sense that we can give it an instruction and it will determine which actions to take and in which sequence. What's also cool about agents is they are able to interact with their environment by using tools. Let's have a look at this in action. And in this video we will create an agent and assign two tools to that agent. The first tool will allow the agent to search the internet for answers and with the second tool, we will grant the agent access to our own custom knowledge base. So let's start by setting up the basics. In our project, let's create a new file and let's call it agent.py. Let's also remember to activate our virtual environment. Let's start by instantiating our model. So let's import chat OpenAI from Langchain OpenAI. And let's also import from Langchain Core.prompts. Let's import the chat prompt template. Let's instantiate our model by calling chat OpenAI. And let's also pass in the model as GPT 3.5 Turbo 1106 and let's set the temperature to 0.7. Let's also go ahead and create our prompt by setting prompt equal to chat prompt template dot from messages and this takes in a list of values and first let's provide our system message with a value of you are a friendly assistant called Max. Then let's also add our human message, which is simply a placeholder called input. So far, this is nothing new, and you should be familiar with this pattern by now. But when dealing with agents, we need to specify one additional variable in the prompt template. And this is not a variable that we will populate, but instead the agent will use it behind the scenes to keep track of its goals, steps, and outputs. So after human, we can add this special variable using the messages placeholder object, which we had a look at in the previous video. And we can import that from prompts. So let's simply add messages placeholder. And in the prompt template, let's pass in messages placeholder with a variable name of agent scratchpad. And do take note, you need to enter this exactly like this. Otherwise, you will receive an error message when executing the agent. So at this point, we would usually create our chain. But instead of creating a chain, we will now create an agent. And in order to create an agent, we need to import two things from Langchain. First, from Langchain.agents, we will import the create OpenAI functions agent. And we also need an agent executor. We will use this function to create the definition of the agent and we will use the agent executor to invoke our agent. You can view the different agent types and their use cases by going to this page in the Langchain documentation and here you can see a full list of all the agents along with a guide on when to use them. And in this video we will have a look at the OpenAI functions agent which will allow us to add chat history to this agent and pass in tools. So let's create our agent by setting this equal to create OpenAI functions agent and this takes in an LLM as input which we can set equal to our model. Then we also need to provide the prompt which we called prompt. And lastly, we need to specify a list of tools. So let's go ahead and create a variable called tools and let's set this equal to an empty list for now. And let's pass in tools to the agent. Then lastly, let's also create our agent executor by setting this equal to agent executor. And this takes in our agent as input as well as the list of tools like so. So basically this function defines our agent and we can then use the executor to invoke our agent. So in our code, we can actually type something like response is equal to agent executor dot invoke and for its input let's pass in a dictionary with a property called input and let's set this equal to hello just to test this out however if we try and run this we will receive an error message and that is because this agent requires at least one tool in fact let's run this in the terminal and let's see what we get and this is simply saying that this function list is too short. And let's add a tool that will allow our agent to search the internet. So at the top of our code, let's import that tool. 
So from Langchain Community dot tools dot Tavily search import Tavily search results. Then just above the tools list, let's instantiate this by typing search, and this is equal to Tavily search results and Let's add search to our list of tools. So in order to use Tavily, we do need an API key. So go over to this URL and you can find the link in the description of this video and simply copy your API key. Then in your environment variable file, create a new variable called Tavily API key and then paste in your API key. And then lastly, we also have to ensure that our environment variables are available to this code. So we can do that by importing .env at the top of our code and then executing load.env. Awesome. Let's test this out by providing a prompt that will require the agent to search the internet for information, like the current weather in Johannesburg. Then let's run this in the terminal and now we do get a response back. And we can see exactly what the agent did behind the scenes by using Langsmith. We can use Langsmith to debug and troubleshoot our Langchain applications. And I highly recommend signing up for the waiting list but if you don't have access don't worry though you don't need it for this tutorial but it is useful to see what the agent did behind the scenes and when we click on this last run we can see on this first step that the agent used an LLM to determine that a function needs to be called and specifically the Tavily search results function. We can then see the function in action and the input into that function was weather in Johannesburg today as well as the output from that function. And this function's output was then passed back into our model in order for this model to answer the question accurately. Another great feature about these agents is that we are able to pass in a chat history which will convert this agent into a conversational chatbot. So in the interest of time, I'm simply going to copy the code from the previous video where we had a look at converting this retrieval chain into a chatbot as well. So let's go ahead and copy all of this code from this if statement and let's add it to the bottom of this file. But in this instance, we do not need docs, vector store or chain. We will keep chat history. We will keep the while statement as well as user input and this code to exit out of the conversation. Response is calling this process chat function, which we need to create. So let's do that now. Above response, let's create the function called process chat, which will take the agent executor as input, as well as the user input, and lastly, the chat history and we can simply add this code to this function and instead of printing the response we will return response dot output and this will give us the string response from the agent so instead of passing in chain let's pass in agent executor instead and for the chat history we need to import the human message and ai message schemas so at the top of the file let's import those from langchain dot langchain core dot messages import the human message and the ai message and also let's not forget to replace this hard-coded text with user input and let's also add the chat history to the prompt so we can do that by making a small change to our prompt template so just below the system message let's add messages placeholder with a variable name of chat history i know we went through this quite quickly but we do cover chat history in detail in the previous video, so be sure to check that out. And lastly, let's ensure to add the chat history when we invoke this agent. So let's also add chat history with a value of chat history, like so. And believe it or not, but that is all we have to do to convert this into a conversational agent. Let's test this in the terminal, so we can see this message you. Let's type hello and i am getting this error message and this should not be dot output but instead brackets and output like so right now let's test this in the terminal let's say hello and let's see if it's got memory let's type my name is leon and let's ask it what is my 
name. And this time it was able to recall my name. So let's have a look at how we can add a retriever as a chain. And this will allow us to attach external data sources or pretty much any data source like a PDF document to this agent as well. So this means the agent will first try to answer the question from its trained data. If it can't find the answer or if it's not confident in the answer, it will try to answer the question from one of our tools. We already had a look at how retrieval works in our previous two videos, so I am going to go through this quite quickly and just focus on how we can convert a retriever into a retrieval tool and then add that to the agent. And therefore, I'm actually going to copy most of the code from this retrieval chain file and you can find the source code for this file in the description of this video. I'm going to copy the code to create the loader as well as the text splitter and the split docs. And let's add that to the top of the code and let's just add a comment to keep this clean like create retriever and let's paste in this code. Then let's also copy the code to create the embedding and the vector store and let's add it just below split docs. And lastly let's also copy the code to create the retriever and we'll paste it just below the vector store like so. Let's also fix up these imports by copying those as well. So let's copy the document loaders, the text splitters, embeddings, as well as the vector store. And let's add this to our imports as well. Now we just have to specify this URL. Obviously you can use any URL that you want in order to follow along, but I'll simply reuse the same URL from this video and then add that to our web based loader, obviously as a string, like so. I'm actually going to increase this value to three, and then we are creating a retriever which will allow us to retrieve documents from the vector store. Now what we want to do is provide this retriever as a possible tool for the agent so that when we ask questions about the Langchain expression language, it will use the retriever instead of the search tool. This is really easy to do. All we have to do is import a function from Langchain. So from Langchain.tools dot retriever let's import the create retriever tool function now let's go to our list of tools and let's create a new variable called retriever tool which is equal to create retriever tool this takes in our retriever as input and secondly the name of this tool which i'll call lcel search and finally we have to also provide a description for this tool and this will be used by the agent to determine when this tool should be used so let's enter something like use this tool when searching for information about langchain expression language or lcel now we can simply add this tool to our list of tools and that is all we need to do. Let's give this a spin. Let's try this out in the terminal and let's ask what is LCEL? And we do get the correct answer back. And if we have a look at Langsmith, we can already see that the LCEL tool was definitely used. And in the first node, we can see the list of available tools. So we had the Tavily search tool as well as our LCEL tool or our retriever tool. And as the output, the agent correctly identified that we need to use the LCEL tool to find this answer. I highly recommend having a look at all the different tools that are available for Langchain. And it is also possible to create your own custom tools. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and please like and share this video.